So here we are at the sink and here is one of the finished fittings. So what we're going to do now is, uh, you see all this gold and rainbow and straw colouring in here. Um, that's an indicator that I had the temperature correct while I was welding. And uh, if it was black or really sloppy that would mean I had the amps too high. So my foot control with the pedal must have been pretty good. But we're going to get rid of that. You can either scrub it with a stainless steel brush or you can use this stuff here called Antox 71E+. Plus. Now, this is a very, very nasty gel which contains nitric and hydrochloric acid. So yes, you don't want to be getting any of this on your skin and you certainly don't want to be inhaling it. So I've already shaken the tub up and I've got a brush here which is, they don't last long the brushes for this kind of stuff by the way. But we're just going to get a little bit of the gel very carefully you don't want to splash this on yourself we're just going to paint it onto all the heat affected areas if i just zoom in a little bit you'll see exactly what i'm doing and already you can see look that the colors have began to disappear get a little bit on the inside because there's a little bit of color change on the inside and then we'll do the same on the outside. So you watch that straw colour. Woof. Gone to silver almost straight away. So what that's doing is repassivating the steel. So if you guys are brewing with stainless steel vessels, a little bit like the SS Brutex stuff that I've just bought, Tom's got, then you'll notice on the package it says they want you to passivate the steel and a lot of people are using star sand for that, which will do it but pretty much any acid will passivate the steel to a certain extent what you're trying to do I think is uh, rebond the chromium ions in the, in the steel, I think that's what the process is anyway I'm sure if I'm wrong somebody will correct me but that's as far as I know there we go, so what I like to do then once I've done that is just sit it in the bottom of the sink and I'll leave it there for 15 minutes which is usually enough and then I'll come back and with some cold water and a running tap we'll rinse all of this off and then we'll give it a final clean with some detergent or some caustic or something like that and that will neutralize any of these acids that are left behind and then of course the next stage is for the whole fitting to go on the tank as it undergoes a clean in place or CIP process so I'll do the rest of these and then we'll come back when we're ready to wash it off and we'll have a look at the fittings then and then of course one of the benefits of having a double sink at work is why we've got all those parts sat cooking over there if you like I can turn another tap on in the other sink section and we can wash our brush and our hands while we know that all the rest of that stuff is uh, safely sat in a sink where nobody else is going to get to it and get it on their skin there we go. Beautiful. Right, so I've uh, I've taken these out of the sink. I've already given them their initial wash. And then what I like to do is just get a little bit of. Uh, stainless steel wool and just hit all around the edges with it just to get in any nooks and crannies that maybe the the brush has missed I just use this brush to clean clean the other stuff off clean the antox off and then obviously washed the brush and then I need to just get in there 
and then we'll have a bit of a close up and I'll show you how effective that Antox really is at cleaning up any mess. So let's put you against a white background here and get in and have a look at that. There we go. So that's the weld. You can see it's slightly proud because the threaded fitting was sticking through a little bit but we've just flowed all that extra stainless as filler metal to run all the way around the hole and on the other side you can see that we've got a lovely welded seam with no coking whatsoever and in the end even though the hole is slightly off centre to this side you really cannot tell so that is a snap lock or a cam lock ready to go into action impressive looking little fellow don't you think right so i'm up on top of the our second bank of five fermenters the new fermenters that we've just completed and i've brought with me the fittings that we've just made here they are so what i like to do while we're up here is uh, install a dust plug into the top of the fitting and generally what I've been doing is I've left out the o-ring I've not put the o-ring back inside you know the ones that we took out before welding and then that means that whilst it is a really tight flush fit between the bottom of the dust plug and the bottom of the uh, the B fitting that means that no bugs or anything can get in because it's a flush fit but gases are able to sneak past and that means when we're fermenting we can allow the CO2 out of the tank without having to put a blow off tube on. So that's normally how I've been operating all the fermenters. At the moment we've got a press blank on top of here. Of course we know we've just changed the whole thing out for one of these. So all I'm going to do now is just put its arms up in the air, somehow, can be a bit of a pain in the butt, there we go. So now that's on the RG team up, we'll install that onto the tank, and that's one fermenter now ready for CIP and then action, we can start to put some beer in this one. So we've got the tanks finished and I thought you know what I'm gonna go home uh, and then Adrian turned up he's a chap who's been uh, helping me out here and there and uh, well we got stuck in to all this section over here that has been quite a mess for some time and uh, well we've basically consolidated everything into that corner and brought these two metal filing cabinets up to put all the junk and jazz in and you know what I'm really impressed with how it looks so we do have a little bit of scrap to get rid of but that's not a problem and uh, because we have cleared all that lot out I thought you know what let's also finish off the storage for the hops so we were storing the hops in this fridge but as I showed you the other day it was just freezing the outside of the fridge or at least there was condensation on it and I don't think it was a thermostat because the compressor was actually turning off so I've decided to allocate conditioning room number one to a hop and a hop cold store so let me just come around here and turn on this little light I'll probably change this at some point so here we go we now have a walk-in cold store where we can put all of our hops on shelves to keep them nice and fresh and there's room as well for Isinglass down at the bottom and uh, we just put literally just put this light bulb up in the corner and then Gemma's found uh, these two bul uh, bulkhead caged bulkhead fittings so I think what I want to do instead is take that ropey light bulb out and install one of these at least if we hit it with anything 
like our heads we're not going to be directly electrocuted as you would be maybe with with that bulb there you go you can just see that can't you look because I've turned the white balance right down brilliant anyway so I'm going to go and change that and then I think I'm going to have to go home because my knee is really starting to hurt now right so we've got a light fitted in the uh, cold room and because I want to run that cold room a little bit colder now oh this is going to be bad I get off I know it oh, I can't get it off Terrible news. There we go. Yeah, anyway. <sighs> because I want to run the cold room a little bit colder, I've decided that uh, we better put the glycol into the tank. So I've taken out what I think is around 25 litres, and I want to go ahead and pour this 25 litres of monopropylene glycol straight into the tank just like that and then that means that I'll be able to set the reservoir below freezing meaning we'll have a better buffer inside the cold rooms to get the temperatures down to closer to 5 degrees for that particular tank and uh, the rest of them can stay at 8 or 11, the other two tanks, the other two cold rooms should I say. So we store all our hops at around 5 and all the beer at 11 and then we'll set the value for this particular unit to something like minus 2. So it's going to have a good buffer of cold of seven degrees lower than what we're going to set the closest cold room to so I think it should cope we'll see right so I think I'm also a little bit short there yeah there's the overflow pipe so all I'm going to do now is put a bit of this cold water back in that I took out previously I don't want it out of the overflow to be honest but well, that's pretty damn close. Then we'll stick the insulation back on the top. Is that the right one? It's probably for there. Yeah, that's for that side. That's for that side. So this doubles up as insulation and a lid. And then we've got all this cold water to get rid of. That's how easy it is. So we'll come down here now. You see we're sat at 15 degrees all of a sudden. And the temperature was set to two. So we'll change that. Hope you can see me. Uh, minus one, minus two. Minus four. Let's see how that gets on overnight. Make sure we've got enough water in here as well. Yeah, that's our cooling water. We want to put some glycol in there eventually. So what will happen is, during winter, there's a potential for that water in that part of the uh, system to actually freeze if we don't put glycol in there as well. So that's... Uh, that's another part that we need to, I'm going to have to buy some more glycol though, but we've got enough for what we need for summertime. So it took me a while to get around to it, but there we go. We now have a cold room. I mean, that does look pretty smart, doesn't it? Hey, cold store. We'll turn the fan on. There he goes. We'll turn the STC on and I'm going to change the temperature that it's set to we'll try 8 degrees first and we'll see how it gets on with that and then we'll come back tomorrow and if it's doing 8 degrees no problem then we'll change it to 5 but it's going to take all night for everything to get down to temperature anyway 
but I'm really pleased look at that we have a freaking cold room folks beautiful hop store well that's it folks I've spent far too much time here today uh, honestly my knees not gonna get any better at this rate it's approaching half past five now so I'm gonna have to go home get rested up I think that all the rest that I gave myself yesterday has been completely undone today so we'll see how we feel in the morning if I haven't got it in me to come into work it's hard to stop myself let me tell you but I know that health has to come first sometimes so if I don't have it in me to come tomorrow then we'll probably do something at home like some cold process soap making and see how we get on with that but uh, other than that folks that's it for the day uh, and as usual we hope we'll see you tomorrow see ya